But the moment your life changes and when you decide to take the blame from external and blame everything internally and go, wow, this reality that I have is not the reality that I want. This is my fault. Today, we're gonna to talk about how to completely reset your mindset and your brain. Now, I know there's people out there going, is that even possible? The answer to that is yes, as long as you follow the strategy I'm gonna teach. I'm gonna give you two different options, two different strategies that you can use depending on where your life currently is and depending on what it is that you're trying to create in your life. So, you know, when people think about who they are, a lot of times what holds people back from changing their life and ultimately creating the life that they want to is that they look at their lives and say, well, you know, this is who I am. This is what I've done. This is who I will always be. And in the book Mindset by Carol Dweck, she says that's considered a fixed mindset, which is this is the way it is. This is the way it's always been. This is how I am. This is in my genes. This is in my DNA. My family's always been this way. There's nothing that I can do to change it. That's a fixed mindset. On the other side of that is a growth mindset, knowing that no matter what it is that I want to do, I can do it. It's just going to take changes in me. And that's the type of mindset that you have to have in order to change your life. And so when you say, can I completely reset myself? Absolutely. Who you are is not set in stone. Your personality is not concrete. Your personality is just something that you decide. It's like a, a mask you decide to put on every single day and just continue to keep wearing every single day. Nobody says you can't switch masks to something different. You know, one of my favorite phrases is Alan Watts says, you're under no obligation to be who you were five minutes ago. In the phrase, personality comes from the Greek word, root word, persona. And persona, back in the Greek days, were just masks that people would wear when they would go on stage. That's what a mask was. It was the persona. So your personality can change at any time. You just have to make the conscious decision to change your personality because you want to change your results. So just realize that, that where you are, who you are, that's not concrete. It never has been. It never will be. The only time it becomes concrete is when you develop a fixed mindset of this is how I will always be because you've made the decision to always be that way. There's two options, as I said, that we're going to go over today. Number one is if you feel like you need small changes in your life, maybe your life is pretty good. Maybe you've done some work on yourself, but you're just not where you want to be yet. And on the other side of that, option number two is a complete overhaul of your life. So let's dive into both those options. So option number one is small changes. You know, your life might be good. You might make decent money. You might have a pretty good house and maybe you're happy-ish most of the time and you got a pretty good family and maybe you take a vacation every single year and it's not like life sucks it's not terrible it's not this place that's hell that you're stuck in but deep down in your heart you feel like there is more for you like you're not living up to your potential like there's another level or maybe another five levels of life that you're really meant to live through but you're still stuck at the level that you're currently at. So that's this is gonna be option number one, which is just small changes in your life, right? In this case, what you're gonna do, I hope you take this and actually do this, because I know a lot of people listening are like, that's a great idea, but then you'll never actually do it. The people that will have massive change in their lives are the people that actually listen to this and then make changes and listen to what I say. The thing that you need to do is you need to go to the store and buy a small pocket size notebook, not use your phone, not use your iPad, nothing. You're gonna have a small pocket sized notebook that can go into your back pocket. And you're gonna carry that with you and a pen everywhere you go for the next 30 days, okay? And here's what we're going to do. Anytime that something happens to you or that you do something that you're like, oh man, like my highest version of myself, the one that's five levels above where I currently am, wouldn't have done that. And you're gonna write that down. Here's the reason why is because writing it down is bringing the awareness to the physical form versus just making a mental note. Because how often, I'll give you a perfect example. How often do you go t into another room and then you get into that room and you're like, why the hell did I just come into this room? I, I don't know about you, I do it all of the time. So when you go, oh, I'm gonna make a mental note of how I want to make changes. If you go from literally the kitchen to, the, to your bedroom and forget in those 10, 15 seconds what it is that you were supposed to be getting, what makes you think that you could possibly remember all of the things that are programmed inside of you that you want to change. And so what we're doing is we're taking the things that you want to change about yourself to then create the reality that you want. And you're actually going to write it down in physical form. What you're doing is you're actually training your brain to flag 
the things that you don't want to have anymore. You're training your brain to flag the places in your life where you want to make adjustments. And what's happening is it's called a, a pattern interrupt is actually what it is. You're in the middle of doing something and instead of continuing going, oh, mental note, you're going to actually interrupt that pattern and you're going to write down with a pen and paper what it is that you're actually trying to work through and what you're trying to change. Oh, this just happened. And instead of doing this, I would have preferred to do this. So you write it down. This is what happened. And instead of doing this, I would have preferred to do this. I will start doing this. This is what I'm going to do from now on. And then what you do is now you have a little notebook that says all of the things that you did and all the changes that you want to make. So now what we're going to do is we're going to try to put this into your subconscious and your subconscious is most active when you're asleep. And so what you do is you take that little notebook out every single night. And what you do is you read through the things that happened today that you want to make adjustments on and how you're going to make adjustments on them. You're programming your subconscious to actually start to make these changes while you're asleep. It's little incremental changes like this, which is where you actually start to make three, four, five, ten 10 years down the road. These little incremental changes end up being massive changes in your life. Maybe, you know, you wake up late and you're like, oh crap, I didn't want to wake up this late. I hit the snooze button three times. Okay. Get your pen and paper, write down, hit the snooze button three times. Would have preferred to not hit the snooze button at all. Tomorrow I'll wake up at 5 a.m. like my alarm clock says. It could be, you know, I said something in the middle of an argument to my significant other and my, you know, I know when my emotions are high, my logic is low. So I would have preferred to say this or to keep my mouth shut or to let it blow over, whatever it is that you would have preferred action. So instead of letting my emotions take over me and lashing out at her, I would have preferred to do this, right? I'm bringing awareness and then actually writing down the change that I want to make. Bringing awareness, writing down the change that I want to make. You know, I, I stayed on the couch for an extra 30 minutes today and didn't get my workout in because I ran out of time before I had to, you know, leave to go do something. So what I would have preferred to do is actually work out for those 30 minutes instead of laying on the couch the entire time. Next time I find myself on the couch with free time, I am going to get up and I'm going to make changes. I'm going to get off, get off my ass and get into the gym, right? So you're writing down all of the little things. I had a friend who I, I taught this to. And she hated how she judged people too much, which I think a lot of us can relate to that. It's just, I don't know if it's a, a comparison thing that we all have from our tribal days where we look at people and we judge them quicker and we try to place ourselves above them. Maybe it's a lack of self-worth where we try to make ourselves feel like we're above people. She hated how she would judge people because that's not her true self. That was just her conditioned self. She actually told me this past week that she noticed somebody and she noticed that she immediately judged her. And it was a judgment popped into her head and she goes, oh damn, that girl's big. And not even big in like, like she was fat or anything. She was just a really tall, large girl. Like just, you know, took up space, I guess you could say in the nicest way. And she noticed that with the repatterning of her brain, her brain, she actually thought this, never said out loud, but it went like this. Oh my gosh, that girl's really big. I love her. Because what happened was she trained herself whenever she started to judge somebody, because she didn't want to judge people, she wants to love people, that she's going to say, I love her, I love him, I love that person, I love this about them. And took the judgment and turned it into love, and took the judgment and turned it into love. She called me and she's like, holy crap, this is crazy, this just happened. Where I saw somebody and I said, oh my God, that's a really big girl, and I felt judgment behind it, my brain automatically went to, I love her. And she could actually start to feel the love for that person. So she literally took something that she didn't like about herself six months ago and started a repatterning process to start to get rid of it. If you fast forward another six months, a year, two years from now, what's amazing about this story is I guarantee you, it's just going to be, I love her. There won't be the judgment because she's starting to repattern the parts that she doesn't like about herself or the parts that she wishes she was more loving in. Now she can go ahead and do this and start to love people more and stop judging people as much. See how this works? It's a repatterning of your brain to change yourself into the person that you want to want, want to be. But the key here is that you've got to bring awareness to the physical form by writing it out. And then what you've got to do is you've got to write out what it is that you want to do in the next time this situation arises, because I guarantee it's going to arise in some pattern, some sort of way. So that's option number one is if you just want to make small changes. Option number two is complete overhaul of your life complete overhaul of your life. And it is to do everything the opposite of the way that you normally would do it. And I got this from my friend, Garen Jones. If you've listened to the podcast with him, you know, he was 
Uh, he had been in a French jail for smuggling heroin for a few years, and he was homeless for two years. And he just decided that he was just going to start doing everything. Like he woke up one day and was like, he realized that his actions and over his entire life got him to where he was. And where he was was not where he wanted to be. So he said, you know what? Instead of me just continuing to do the same things over, because Einstein says to do the same thing over and over again, expect different results in sanity. What I've been doing has gotten me to a place where I don't want to be anymore. So I'm just going to do the opposite of everything that I normally do. And if I do that, eventually my life is going to be different. So he started doing the opposite of what he normally would do. So if he looked at an elevator or an escalator and he wanted to go up another floor, instead of telling, taking the elevator or the escalator, he would search for the stairs and take the stairs instead. Why? Because that's different than what he would normally do. If he usually would stay up late, then he decided what he's gonna do. He's gonna start going to bed early. Okay, if he decided, you know, if he, he noticed that normally he would, he was eating fast food, well, then, you know, make a healthy meal at your house, take some extra time, it's going to take time to do it, but it's something different. Instead of just, I'm going to get this because it's convenient and it's quick, it's I'm going to take time and intention to make something that's healthy. Instead of laying on the couch and just scrolling through Instagram and just seeing I don't know what's going to come up. I bet we could all guess what's going to come up. We know what our feeds are going to look like today, tomorrow, the next day. Instead of just doing that, how about instead of laying on the couch, we decide that we want to go to the gym. What's the opposite of everything that you normally do? So what you do is you take, guess what, a pen and paper, and you write down all of the things that you do that you don't want to do anymore. And then you ask yourself, what is the opposite of that? And you start doing the opposite of it. And then when you notice yourself falling back into the pattern of doing the thing you don't want to do, You've already got the pen and paper that's in front of you that says, hey, these are the things that you want to start doing instead. So if I notice myself, oh, I'm on the couch, scrolling through Instagram, I then become aware, wake myself up out of it, and I go, okay, I'm on the couch. I don't want to be doing this. What was it that I wrote down and told myself that I would do? Oh, that's right, that I would go and do 40 push-ups, whatever it is. Go to the gym, go for a run, go for a swim. And that's how you start to repattern yourself. To the point where Garen got so serious about this, he started learning how to write with a different hand, his other hand, because he heard that depending on what hand you write with, it changes your brain. So he's like, I'm going to change every single aspect about who I am and just see what happens. Just use yourself as a guinea pig and see if it ends up being the life that you want. Eight years ago, he was homeless. Now he lives in a multi-million dollar house and he's married, he's got a kid on the way. He went from depressed and sad to happy, has an amazing life all of this stuff, simply because he just decided to do the opposite of what he had been doing. It's very simple. The life that you currently have right now is just the culmination of all of the actions that you've taken in the past. So if you look at your life and you're not a 100% on it, well then what do you need to do to change it? What about your life? What, what past decisions, if you would have made them differently, would have made your current reality different as well? It's simple. You know, your life is just simply the end result of all of your past actions. That's it. The problem is a lot of times we don't want to take acceptance of that. We want to be able to blame externally. Oh, it's my parents' fault for the way that they raised me. It's the government's fault because they didn't give me what I wanted. It's, you know, my, uh, the president's fault because he, you know, he looks like that or does this, whatever the hell you want to blame. We could blame everything external, but the moment your life changes and when you decide to take the blame from external, and blame everything internally and go, wow, this reality that I have is not the reality that I want. This is my fault. And it's my fault from decisions that I made in the past. So if I want to make my future reality different, I need to make different decisions right now. So those are the two different options that you have. Either number one, if you want to make small changes, kind of like you're just optimizing your life and making it better, <clears throat> get that pen and paper, bring it with you everywhere and start to write down everything that's happening. Write down whatever it is that, that you don't like and then what you wish that it would be. If you need a complete overhaul of your life, well, just start doing the opposite of what you would do. And then every moment you go, you know what? I normally would take this route to work. I'm going to take a different route. I normally would, you know, lay on the couch. I'm going to do 50 push-ups, And you start challenging yourself to just do something different. What we're talking about is a complete repatterning of who you are. Your brain will change when you change. You have to do something different. Your brain will not change if you just keep doing the same every single day. But if you start doing something different, your brain will automatically change with you as well. So if you want to completely change your life and reset your mindset, those are the tips that I have for you today. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. If you want to learn even more about mastering your mind, click right here and watch this video as well. In losing 
my freedom, I discovered my freedom. Mm. So maybe the universe needed to remove all of the things I gave power to so that I can remember where the power belonged mm -hmm. inside of myself. Mm -hmm.